Welcome to another episode of Brand Academy. As always, my name is Brand. I am Mr. Wynn's twin. Okay. And so now for today's lesson, we are talking about. Let me get rid of my beautiful face. We are talking about parallel lines and proportional parts. Okay. Two things we know already. We know about parallel lines. Okay, and we know about proportional parts, right? Which what we have been doing for similar triangles. Okay, so just reading right here, okay, we know what we learned in seven dash three. Okay, in any triangle, when you have a line parallel to one side of a triangle, it creates two similar triangles. Okay, like what we have right here. Okay. We know these triangles are similar because of angle angle similarity right because we know again these angles are congruent because they are corresponding angles and they share angle T okay so we know that they're similar okay which is what we stated down here so triangle TSL and triangle TRU right again TSL oh shoot just get a highlighter TSL right here with the small blue one. And let's go with TRU, okay, which is this red one right here. Okay, we know that they are similar. And so this next statement here says come up with possible lengths for the sides of the two triangles. Okay, so the lengths we have right here, which is what we know from before, ready? Okay, I'm going to start with the small triangle first. Okay, TS should be proportional to RT. Oh, sorry, let's go SR. SR, okay, and that should be proportional to, let's go with in red, TL over LU. Okay, so we know that, right? Comparing the smaller parts to the bigger parts. And so, with this right here, look at our next scenario. Okay, what are we comparing here? Let's go in this right here in purple. Okay, TS over SR. Okay, where is that? Let's try to identify that right now. TS, okay, is right here. That the blue triangle, right? TS is right there, and SR is this other small segment, okay? And so what we're saying here, this side, okay, when I have TS and SR, and we're comparing it to the other side here, let's make this, I made this blue, we're going TL to UL. So it actually turns out that not only were the original, right, this original right here, not only were the sides of the triangles are proportional, but it also turns out that their parts are also proportional. So that's why we have RS right here and LU, right, these two smaller parts are here, RS and LU. Okay, those are also proportional. Okay, so these actually will equal each other. Okay, since we know proportional means that the ratios are congruent. Okay, so pretty standard. Before we had similar triangles and their corresponding sides. Now, in regards to their sides, they also have proportional parts. So you can break down the sides of a triangle and have them be proportional to each other. 
Okay, so kind of filling this in here, the triangle proportionality theorem. Okay, fancy word, but all it really means is that when you have a parallel line, which is what we have in this example, parallel line that intersects the other two sides. Okay, so for example, LS was that line right there. Okay, LS. Then it divides the sides into segments of proportional lengths. Okay, so as an example, if using the diagram above, if SL, right, and SL is that segment in the middle, is parallel to RU, then the segments that it intersects are proportional. Okay, so again, as long as it is parallel right in the middle there, okay. And of course, this next one here is just the converse of it. So if we know that the line that intersects two sides of a triangle, so it's just a line that intersects, okay? We don't know that it's parallel yet. So if a line that intersects two sides of a triangle and separates the sides into two, sorry, into, just put proportional parts, proportional corresponding segments, corresponding segments, then the line is parallel to the third side of the triangle. Okay, so essentially it's just the converse. So over here I'll put if TS over RS is equal to TL over LU, then SL is parallel to RU. Okay, and that's just us referring back to the diagram right there. Okay. All right. Moving on to the mid segment of a triangle. And so before we talk about mid segment of a trapezoid before, right? Now for a mid segment of a triangle, okay, it really is just a segment with endpoints that are the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. Okay, so for example, looking over here to our right, if X and Y, if these are the midpoints of RT and TS, okay, then it is the mid-segment of the triangle. And try to guess right now on your own, okay, every triangle has how many mid-segments? Okay, we know we have one right there for X, Y. Okay, can I get a midpoint from here? to here in red, right, the middle here. So that would be another mid-segment. And it's going purple from Y to there is another mid-segment, okay? So we would have a total of three mid-segments. And the example down here, if X and Y are the midpoints of RT and ST, then X, Y is a mid-segment of the triangle. Yep. So just a standard definition there. Just always think mid-segment connects with midpoint. Okay, mid-segment with midpoint. Okay, and then we have a little theorem with the mid-segment. So a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to one side of the triangle and its length is one half, so one half is one over two, so one over two is one half the length of that side. Okay, so for example here, uh, going back to our original, okay, XY is a mid-segment, then X, Y is parallel to R, S. 
and xy would be one half of that third side, and that third side is rs. Okay. okay, so let's look down here for some examples. I'm gonna do one, and then you guys will do the other two. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's get the hardest one, uh, second hardest. Let's do number two. Okay, so for number two, uh, right now we don't have a mid segment, okay, because there's no there's no dash marks, right, to indicate that they are midpoints. Okay, so they're not a mid segment. Okay, this is just going back to proportional parts. Okay, so we know that the triangles are similar because we have our two parallel lines there, and now we just gotta match up with our proportional sides, right? So x over x plus ten. So you guys can just link these up right away. x over x plus 10 equals, so again, since we use x for the slimmer segment here, the smaller one, we have to use 10 up top, and then it will be 10 over 30. All right? cross multiply, we would have 30x equals 10x plus 100, do a little bit of math magic, x would equal 5. Okay. So right now I'm going to pause the video. Okay, try to do the other two on your own. And then once you attempted it, okay, unpause it and I will show you guys the answers. And pause. Alright, so please check your solutions here. <clears throat> Feel free to uh, pause the video again if you need to. Uh, just keep in mind for number one, there are two ways to do it, right? The fact that they are mid segments, you can just use a shortcut and use that theorem right there that is half. Or <clears throat> you can still do it old school and say that the scale factor is one half and set up your proportion. Okay, and that works as well. Okay, once you're good, flip it over to the back. Okay, so right here we're talking about more proportional parts with parallel lines. I'm just going to read through right here real quick if you can skim through it. Okay, so there's another special case which involves three or more parallel lines cut by two transversals. Okay, so uh, looking over here, bringing back that T word transversal, these are your transversal. And of course, your three parallel lines are right there one, two, and three. So it turns out that when you have three parallel lines that cut to cut through two transversal, then these parts right here are proportional parts, which is where we can set A over B equal to C over D. Okay. And to the right over here, it's the same example, but in this case, we're just stating that if the ratio equals 1, that means the segments are congruent. Okay? So in this case here, uv, if the ratio is 1, and wx, if the ratio is 1, okay, that means they're going to equal each other. And by equals, I'm saying that u should be equal to w, and v should be equal to x. Okay, they should be equal to the same ones across. So just filling in these theorems here. Okay, if three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they cut off the transversals, transversals, proportionally. And lastly here, if three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, on one of them, then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. Okay, we're going to do an example of that right here. All right. So... Remember these two theorems, okay? 
they involve three or more parallel lines. Okay, so it's going to be pretty obvious to know when to use them because there's going to be a lot of lines in your diagram. Okay, so looking up here, let's do example one together. Okay, we have our one, two, three, three parallel lines. So uh, right now, uh, debating, are we going to use theorem 7.1 or 7.2? Oh, shoot, the lights just turned off. So instead of, uh, sorry, we're debating between 7.1 or 7.2, those theorems. And in this case, do we know that the parallels cut them into congruent segments? Okay, we do not, right? There's no tick marks to say that these are congruent or so forth, right? So we're going to use theorem 7.1. Okay. In this case, you just set them proportional to each other. So over here, we got 5x over 3x. And then x plus 12 over 12. All right. Keep in mind, you're always going to keep them on the same side, right? When I say same side, I mean they should be across from each other, right? So 5x and x plus 12, they should be across from each other as if like that, and same with that, okay? And so you have your proportion, cross multiply. Actually, even before that, what can I do with the x's here? All right, these x's will cancel out. Okay, that's canceling out. They're not black x's. Okay, so they go away. So you have 5 over 3. I'm going to cross multiply. Let me show my work up here. Should be 60 equals 3x plus 36. Do a little bit of math magic. 24 equals 3x. x equals 8. Okay. So moving over to number 2 right here. Oh, wait, am I done? Oh, yeah, I'm done. Make sure you solve for x and y. But that one did not have a y. Okay, so number 2. All right, we got our three parallel lines, right? One, two, three, our three parallel lines. And do these lines cut a transversal into congruent segments? Why, yes, they do right there. So what does that mean? That means the other side, they're going to be congruent to each other. Okay? Keep in mind, they're not all congruent. They are not all congruent. They're only congruent to the side that they are on, okay? So here you can just set 2x minus 6 equals 12, x would equal 9. You can even check by plugging this back in, and it will work out, okay? So here again, just pause the video. You can try these last two on your own. Okay, number four looks funky, okay? But just keep in mind, as long as you have your three parallel lines, Everything else is just a transversal, so stick with your math, okay? All right, I'm going to pause it here, or you guys should pause it. All right, so here are your answers that you guys may check. Okay, so uh, this was pretty fast. I know it's a lot of theorems and definitions, so feel free to ask questions tomorrow. Get any questions you have down right now, and just write them, and just let me know tomorrow. And tomorrow in class, we're just practicing this section. Have a good night.